Hi everybody. So today's video is going to be quite short. I'm just going to talk really briefly about what your next assignment is and it's going to be a project that you work on and as you can see you're going to be building your dream amusement park. So this project that we do is going to replace a test. So it will count as a test grade. It'll be your last test grade for the third marking period. And I'm going to give you guys two days to work on it. So I'm just going to talk really briefly about it and uh, talk you through the steps, basically. So what you first want to do is watch this video, obviously. And then afterwards, I have another description of what the assignment is over here. And then you want to go into the project itself, which is within the Google Slides. The PDF here, this is the rubric uh, that you can follow along. I'm going to go through all of these points anyway uh, within the project itself. So I'm going to go into the Google Slides. So again, I hope you are watching this video first. Um, let's make this a little bigger here. Okay, so as you can see, we're going to be building our own amusement parks. So your first step, and I made it so that none of this you can move. Um, it's all within the background. The only things that you can change or edit are the parts that say like type here, insert something here. Um, so for your first part, you're going to just come up with a unique name. Uh, for your amusement park and you can use either some fun fonts so when you click on this uh, you know type whatever you want select the fonts here or if you go to uh, insert word art here then you can do some funky stuff add some color um, you know simple then we want top attractions so you're gonna come up with three more names one for your best roller coaster, best water ride, and best food place. So give them names, give them descriptions. So like at this food place, you'll be able to find the best burgers, for instance, or the best hot dogs, or the best funnel cake. Um, or this is the best roller coaster. Maybe it goes um, 157 miles per hour. I don't know. Um, and then include pictures of each one. So just go on the internet and find, you know, some inspirational pictures of roller coasters and water rides that you really like. Uh, and again, so this is the only thing that you'll have to edit. So just that part. Our next part, you're going to look at uh, policies of hours and dates. So the hours of operation, you're going to think about what days you actually want your park to be open so maybe you want one day to be closed so if you want mondays to be closed for instance you're, you're just going to type and write closed but maybe tuesdays you want it to be open from 10 to 5 or 10 to 7 so just do some time frames and then maybe there are some days that you want the park to be closed so maybe you want it closed on christmas day think about maybe winter time uh, if this is, uh, depending on what place you put your park in, maybe, you know, the winter doesn't affect you. Um, and then based off of whatever your times are here, so everyone has different times, you're going to answer these four questions. And I made these a drag and drop. So each of these text boxes, you'll just move into the spots here. So for instance, the park will be open 365 days a year. Well, if you gave any days that are it's going to be closed, then maybe it's going to be, you know, one of these. So then you would just click and then drag it into here, for instance, something like that. And then our next slide deals with a roller coaster. So we are presented with a problem where we want to come up with new material for the seats and basically recover them. And we want to use these three colors. You do have to use 
uh, each color at least once. And I made these again a drag and drop. So you're just going to drag them and put them on top. And then maybe you want a green one here and so on and so forth. Maybe a blue one there. Maybe come up with a pattern, whatever you want. But you're going to fill in all 12 of the seats. This is like the front of the roller coaster. And then based off of that, you're going to answer these questions. So you're going to find the probability of a rider being in a certain seat. So you're just going to write these as a fraction. Um, some of you might be asking how to write a fraction. You can just simply write it. So I'm just going to get rid of all of this. Um, if the fraction is one half, just do one divided by two, simply like that. That's all you need. Um, please make sure that they are simplified if they if they need to be. So if it's three out of six, please simplify that to uh, one half. All right, and then we're gonna move on to balloon darts. So now we have an activity where these are the three different types of balloons that we have for the balloon dart game. So we've got some solid, we've got some polka dot, which are a little hard to see right now. Um, if I made this bigger, you'd be able to see. So you can have them polka dot and then striped. And so this is looking at theoretical versus experimental probabilities. So this is what the results were of an actual game. And then this is just, you know, what it should be in theory. So just answer your questions based off of that. So based off of both this diagram and the table. Dessert time almost done. So here we're going to have a scenario where these are all the desserts that are laid out. So these are the three most popular ones. And uh, this is all dealing with counting, uh, I'm sorry, not counting, uh, compound probability. So if you didn't watch the Ed Puzzle earlier after the quiz, on compound probability, you will probably have a hard time with this. So if you don't know how to answer these questions, I recommend you going back to that Ed Puzzle video and re-watching it to, or watching it to begin with, uh, about compound probability, because otherwise you'll have a hard time with these. So again, this is just four different scenarios. What's the probability gonna be? So you're just answering those four questions. And then our last part is the gift shop. So you're going to come up with a name for your mascot. You're going to type in the name there. It's a brown teddy bear. <laughs> um, and so the scenario here is that you're going to have a tree diagram that you create because we've got some options. We've got some shirt options, short options, and then shoe options. And so in order to make this tree diagram, you're going to actually just make a whole bunch of text boxes. So text boxes, you can just do here. So if you click text box and click again, and then you can just start typing, you know, make it smaller because otherwise it's always hard to select whatever you want to select. Uh, I would recommend making the font size much smaller. This is at a 14. I would probably make it about an eight. So, on, you know, and then once you have your text boxes, they do come up transparent at first. So if you would like to make them have a different background, you can do the fill color here and have a different color. Maybe you want, I don't know, like a muted pink. You can also change the border color. And if you want to change the text font uh, color, you can just click the A. So that's just like some simple basic stuff. And then in order to create your tree diagram, you want to connect them using arrows. So here you've got some lines, but if you click the arrow, you can, oh, the drop down arrow, you can go to the arrow option. And then if we had a text box here, for instance, we could just drag and then drop and we end up with an arrow and you can do a whole bunch of those. So once you have your tree diagram, you might want to play around with it. Um, maybe instead of doing it, uh, I'll show you what I mean. Um, this isn't what 
you would use, but if you, and I'm only saying don't use these because you can't edit them and like add extra pieces. So these wouldn't be useful for us, but in terms of layout, so you can either have these extend down or depending on how your text boxes work out and stuff, you might want to do it like this where you're reading going across. So very flexible in terms of that. So once again, you can either go working up bottom or left to right. Um, and that's that. Once you have that, then you just have another three questions to fill out. And that's it. I hope you guys have fun. Please let me know if you have any questions. And when you're done watching this, please just go back onto Google Classroom and start with clicking the Google Slides. You can look over the rubric. You can print it out if you want to. Check things off as you go to make sure that uh, everything is there. I also made sure to include points for you so that you know how much everything is worth. Some things, uh, for instance, some questions are worth two points. The tree diagram, for instance, itself is worth three points. So just keep track so that you know that you're going to end up getting a good enough test grade. All right. So I hope you're all doing well. Please let me know if you have any questions and have fun.